And uh, well, my my mind might actually be late, related to the uh, Horizon mm -hmm. uh, thing. Um, it was startup sequence. What exactly uh, does that do? Yes. So C star that's actually their way to verify that you're using a, a valid software. So the first the, the first command I send is called is verified. So if you're using the app itself. It actually will try to verify that you you are the legitimate user. So by saying that is verified, it actually means that now I do not have to use the CSR app application itself. I can actually use CSR help all by itself. So that free me another port so I can use for other things. Because remember, CSR only allows two con simultaneous connections. So if I if I don't depend on the CSR official app, then I just issue the command. The other thing I, I do also now is that I, I start adding a lot of these standard uh, procedure I do. For example, I set the exposure, exposure time, the gain, the dithering settings, everything I want. That does, I, it seems like some of them are reset after you reset. Them. So what I do is that I, I put all these special things I want that always consistent in the sharp sequence. Because one of the things I th I think I was looking at the at the right one it it had a latitude and longitude in there. Mm. Okay, um, so that's actually another way. So you can, that's one way you can spoof your location. Okay. So okay. Are, we we were wondering about that because we were like, huh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that that's, could be. That's exactly what you can use that for. Okay. But for me, I actually just put my own location because that helps in terms of some of the the alignment stuff. But right. if you're spoofing North Pole, then you just enter your North Pole position or South Pole. Right. Right. Okay. Well, we might want to back out one of the early pulls that I had mm -hmm. because it looks, and if it gets back to zero latitude, mm -hmm. it plugs in what it calculates as your current latitude. Okay. So that would be me overriding you, I think. Mm -hmm. I, well, I don't use North Pole, but it, I suggest don't use zero, just put 0 0.001 or something. Because nobody really exactly is zero, so that's that's true. Well, like somebody could reset it to, it, it, like you could leave the logic of zero, and then we could. Yeah, I, I leave. I mean, my internal code would be the same. It's it's how 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 you the GUI wants to interpret. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's good that we have we kind of have it separate so that we independently any internal logic is in the daemon side. And yeah. The GUI is just a, a layer on top, so we can actually yeah. have have separate development, and we don't have to yeah. be tied too close together. That's a very good yeah. Person. yeah. Well, and it's and and yeah, I was thinking, plus, you know, it it kind of exercises the the API, mm -hmm. so it's not making any assumptions about some internal functionality. So it's it's only going through the public API. in the below the horizon then okay so okay. as i said before um it's c star the internal uh, logic and firmware it determined through the plate solving and whatever determined through the geometry if the arms of the camera is below the horizon and once you detect that it won't let you do anything it won't let you move it won't let you stack and that's that's that limits purely by software so what I've done is that I full it by, so let's say my, my target is at deck um, minus 20, which if, in a normal equatorial mode, its arm is below horizon. So in those cases, let's say, in my, in, let's say my night, I decide I want to target all the targets at below horizon, or that has, has potential below the, horizon during the, the night. The eagle, I think, is below horizon right now. So what I do in this case, I set that command I, I show you to let's say 30, okay? So what that means now is that when I tell it to go to Eagle Nebula, it would it would know that it would tell Caesar go to deck 10 degrees. Make sense? But what yeah. I, when, when I tell deck to go 10 degrees, what I do is that subsequently I tell it to go below 30, uh, and then I tell it to move in deck direction, 30 degrees. 
that separates the C star logic to say, I'm not trying to move to, to, to Eagle Nebula. I'm trying to go to a position that is 30 degree deck higher than Eagle Nebula. Then I try to move down 30 degrees. So that okay. tricks C star. Okay. So when I do that, it will go ahead and move wherever I want, even almost to the, sh to the, to the very low, uh, very, almost to the base. Then what happened is that um, the next trouble I had was that when I, I can move there, but when I start stacking after the first image, it always does plate swap. In fact, that's how C star does, um, it actually just seems like does plate, uh, plate swap every time, every every 10 seconds or 20 seconds, whatever is suffering, it does a it does a plate swap. The reason it does that is that because it may have errors in the movement, so it, it readjusts itself. Based on a plate swap, it moves. That's why it always does plate swap. So what I do, because when it plate swap, I told you when C star plate swap decide that it's below horizon, it's gonna say, aha, it's below horizon, I'm gonna shut you down. So what I do with that is that I, I tell it to stack, but I don't tell it to plate swap. I tell it to stack, and that plates off separately. And then also because of that, again, I tell it to adjust position. So I, I actually do that when I do spectroscopy, is that I tell it to separate the, st the stacking and plate solving so that I can tell it to, to have more finer control. That in basic idea is how you do below horizon images. Now there okay. is, a, <coughs> there is a, one thing that to keep in mind is that I've seen this before is that after I set to my, uh, set the value to 30 and when I tell it to shut down, it still thinks the arm is high. So it try to go down and it try to go 30 degrees below down. So you hear gear grinding. So one gacha is that you, you probably want to set that offset back to zero and tell it to adjust. So we sync it and then it'll get back to normal. That's one thing that I'll, try, I'll probably improve in my logic later on is that it'll be more, all the logic is done behind the scenes so don't have to worry about it. But for now, this is the way to do it. That's why I don't really publicize it because it's 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 not intuitive until I tell how it's done. So and there there's some catches. So, but you can go ahead and try, and that's how I got my some of my my DSOs to work. Now the other thing I would suggest is that if you're looking at things at below horizon, and if you don't mind just doing it in the in the alt uh, alt, alt yeah because. If you below horizon, that means you're really looking at near horizon anyway, right? So the field rotation right. is not that bad. So if you have the luxury of switching to EQ and alt, alt uplift, I don't use the below horizon as much as I used to, but it's doable. But there, there are cases of, for example, before in a few months before I was with horizon, Orion, half the night it's above horizon, half the night below. It's just on the borderline. In those cases, that makes sense. And I can I can do her below horizon, but if you're looking for targets that are always below horizon that you know is our horizon, I suggest don't even bother. Until yeah. until CW fix that part, or fix that stupid limitation. Okay. It's too That's what I did on Eagle. I just pulled my wedge off and went all as. Yeah. So, so it, like I said, if it if you have targets on borderline between. That go above and below during during the session. Yeah, just go and use it. But if it's all below, I would just use all that. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Fantastic. I'm I I am I'm, I'm as I said before. I I am I'm so happy to to see so many good contribution coming in and and. Ultimately, this, this GitHub is just public domain. It, I, it, it's, it's shared by anybody. Anybody can just just go ahead and use. I'm hoping the code is, is is robust enough that it's easy for you to understand how it's done, and just add function on top. And really, is that if you see functionality that's already there in the, in the official app that you want, it's it's very trivial to add that in, and you can automate any of that. So, for example, I can imagine doing a really intelligent auto focusing. Um, you can actually, in fact, you can, like I say, you just command to actually plate off. So you can actually tell exactly where you are. And you can blindly go anywhere and tell, tell you where you are. So that'd be a good exercise to say, okay, tell me where I'm at. 
And I want to do take the, 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 the liberty, it's, it eliminates. That, that's why I, I, I don't even need, I don't see a need for the actual official app itself because there's so much more I can do by knowing the internal stuff. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll, 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 okay. work, I'll take these two. Oh, 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 one thing, one thing. Do you know of any other files storage that we could use instead of my Google Drive? I mean, I, I don't mind us using my Google Drive, hmm. but, you know, I go on vacation and go publish a bunch of changes and can't can't add to my Google Drive. Um, so I, I, don't, I can't think of any other file storage that we could get. How, how big is the executable? Oh, 25 meg, 27 meg. And, so and how do you... Limits of Discord. I mean, of... of uh, yeah. Right. Right. Um, if I, if I could just make a suggestion here. What yeah. I what I do what I do is I have a separate Gmail address and I use the Google Drive associated with that address that to stack all my stuff that I don't want that I don't want in my personal one. Okay. That will allow someone else to add to. Yes. Or you can you can, yeah. you can have a folder. Yeah. You, can, you can change the permissions to have anybody have edited it already. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I, you know, with zip, we can make multiple. Yeah. That's my other suggestion files. is that you can actually split the zip into multiple zips. And, and then we can put it on Git. Exactly. Yeah. Then we can put it in GitHub. Okay. I'll work on that. And that way anybody can do it. And I'll, I'll put a readme in there on how to do it. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. It's, yeah. it's brain dead simple. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I'll I'll, okay. I'll stop this uh, meeting now, and I'll post these in my, my YouTube, and go ahead and share this to anybody you want. And my hope is that more people use it and, and contribute. And, and if I get more developers and, and, and more stuff, it's even better. Thank yep. you very much. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.